All right, more on energy. McKinsey and Company has said that Seplite Energy PLC, Nigeria's uh, indigenous energy company, uh, said uh, said that and other producers, including Seplite, are projected to grow uh, due to a number of uh, of factors. Now, the consulting the consulting firm. Uh, that is McKinsey and Company, uh, did disclose this at uh, the Seplat Industry Lecture and uh, ABC or, ja or, or Jaco sent forth an event held in Lagos uh, over, uh, over the, the weekend. Now, according to McKinsey, decarbonizing production and cost leadership will be key going forward as capital providers continue to reduce exposure to oil and gas. Uh, we are joined by Ifai Otizi, who is an analyst with Financial Derivatives Company Limited, to talk more about this energy, 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 future, future, future. Ifai, you're very welcome. So what do you make of that uh, projection from um, uh, McKinsey? So the projection is, well, came not as a surprise, but because we saw this coming. Now, what I would say is that the projection can be attributed to increase in industrialization and um, increase in rapid or rapid population growth in Africa. So industrialization is said to grow exponentially um, in recent or in coming years. And then uh, population growth is said to increase between now and 2040 by 2% every year okay. in Africa. Now, also, it's been estimated that um, energy demand in Africa will increase um, by like 30% between now and 2040. So taking all of that into consideration, Africa and Nigeria um, can come together or do it separately if they want to, but essentially develop their infrastructure, increase production cap uh, capabilities, and also hire um, smart, skilled workers to increase reserves to meet domestic demand for the individual countries, pro produce enough that we can export either through joint ventures as African countries or as separate countries to other parts of the world. Now, um, we would not forget the fact that the global momentum essentially is moving away from um, fossil fuels, which right. we specialize in, yep. to um, sustainable energy. So what we now have to take into consideration is the fact that we need to look to, look to other sources. Indeed. So diversify from fossil fuels solely to other, other sustainable forms of energy. And speaking of those other sustainable forms of energy, as far as renewables are concerned, how far can they go in alleviating this energy crisis that we're seeing? How far can renewable energy go? Okay, so to answer this question, mm. I would bring it home. And bringing it home, I'll talk about the current energy crisis in Nigeria. So um, we've seen that businesses and households have been um, grappling with the skyrocketing prices in diesel. For example, so at the beginning of the year, diesel price hovered around 350 naira per litre. Now we're looking at diesel price at um, a little over 850 naira in some parts That's of the right. country. Yeah. Um, now, if you're looking at uh, petrol fuel, I don't know if you noticed, but recently we saw fuel queues building yeah. at some yeah. petrol stations. Yeah. And this is as a result of agitation from um, independent petrol marketers who have said that the 165 naira per litre, which is the government stipulated price, is not reasonable anymore for right. them because they're not making a lot of profit. Yeah. Now, um, bringing it also to uh, power supply, which is what we're supposed to be getting yeah. as Nigerians. Now, power supply is erratic. Everybody knows this. But then this year alone, we've seen that the national grid has collapsed about five times. Yeah. Um, so all of this has high economic impact for households and businesses who have seen increase in operating and living costs. Yeah. All of these costs are now being borne by consumers who have seen a, a rapid increase in um, price of goods and services. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you're talking, to, if you talk to your average Nigerian, they also tell you salaries are not increasing. <laughs> so um, it's, it's, it's terrible for us here. Yeah. But then if you focus on other sources of energy, and this is coming back to your question on yeah. renewable energy, you'd see, for example, solar energy is you know, the most available mm -hmm. um, in Nigeria. But then the problem is that we do not have um, sufficient financing, um, not, not, not just in terms of manufacturing, but you see your average Nigeria can't afford solar energy power systems. Mm -hmm. So if we say stakeholders come together, so banks provide low cost um, financing for companies, and also provide um, low cost, low borrowing costs for consumers so they can borrow to actually purchase. And then gov government 
fixing the national grid first, yes, which please. is the primary concern, uh -huh. and then um, coming up with other solutions for people to be able to afford um, solar energy, that would be really good. Mm. Now, another thing I was also considering is the fact that methane gas is everywhere. Mm. So methane gas basically is obtained from uh, decomposing organic um, um, material, yeah. and um, you can find that in landfills, ETC. Now, methane gas can be captured and um, converted to natural gas that mm. can actually be used. So in developed worlds, you've seen that, that can, that's been used to power equipment, sometimes vehicles. So that's something I'm excited to see in Nigeria. Very quickly, can the natural gas, uh, since you're mentioning uh, the methane now, um, you've seen what's been going on with the deals being signed with natural gas around. Can, can Nigeria take advantage very briefly if you can? Yes, I feel Nigeria can take advantage. However, um, I would answer this from the point of the fact that natural gas is a fossil fuel. Let's take that into consideration. Let's not forget that. Mm. So it's considered a cleaner fossil fuel because of its lower carbon emissions, but it's, it's obtained from a fossil fuel. So the EU is um, paying attention to oil producing countries like Nigeria that have been clamoring for natural gas to be included as a clean source of energy. Now, when that happens, we would see increase in investments in Nigeria, we would see um, job opportunities, we would also see um, infrastructure development. Um, and with all of that considered, the Nigerian factors and the fact problems that plague Nigeria, yeah. ranging from insecurity to transportation, all the way to bad governance and corruption, we need to fix all of that. Because if you're looking for investments in the sector, mm. people who are investing money want return on their investments. So with all of these risks, it might be um, factors that might prevent them from investing in this sector. So we need to fix our problem. If I OCC, uh, analyst with Financial Derivatives Company Limited, thanks for joining us to talk energy. It's, it's, a, it's a rosy future, it's an optimistic future. We appreciate your time. All right.